welcome to Colonial Manor Realty presents Real Estate with the Pros. I am your host, Bobby Botticelli, and I know you haven't seen me for a while, but I thought it was time to get back into action. Tonight we have a very interesting subject, and I think you're going to all enjoy it, whether you're in the process of selling your home, thinking of selling your home, or not even selling your home. It's just a fun project and it is staging your home for sale. You know, I've been in the business almost 30 years, and every time I go to a home, and I've been in thousands, not just in Reading, but all over the map, every time I go in a home, I expect to find one or four scenarios. Either 3% of the homes are gonna be fixer-uppers or tear-downs, 10% of the homes are going to be absolutely beautiful, magazine quality. And then the other 87% fall into two other categories. One is our grandparents and our parents' home, and we go in and they say, oh, everything's new, it's just beautiful. We just redid the bath. We just did the bathroom. And they say, oh, really? And when did you do the bathroom? And Mr. Seller looks at Mrs. Seller and he says, when did we do it, Ma? What, 1963, 64? Yes, it was new, Mr. Seller, when you put it in, but it's no longer new now. And you find that funny, I'm sure, but truly, think about your grandparents and your parents. Don't touch the flock wallpaper, because it's perfect. I know, that's what my mother says, and she's 94. The other scenario is you go into a home, and it's a decent, nice home. However, it's cluttered. It's not decorated. The kids have their toys everywhere. The dogs and the cats are running all over the place. And the sellers truly don't know what to do about getting this house ready for market. Well, my job as a realtor is to get you the most money in the least amount of time with the less stress or the least stress. I take care of getting you the most money and hopefully I take care of the least amount of stress. But my guest tonight, Karen DiMatte, who is an award-winning stager, will take care of selling it in the least amount of time. Karen, I am so glad that you've joined me. Thank you for having me. I've wanted to have a show with you for the longest time since you know, you've been staging for me for many years. And I love when I can just call you and say, Karen, you know, the house needs this or it needs that. You come in and figure it out. And the best part is you say staging on a shoestring, and you really mean it, because I think people don't understand. I think they think that staging is like interior decorating, and it's not, because selling a house is not the same as living in a home. You know, if you're gonna sell the house, it's just gonna be staged. If you're living in the home and you're gonna stay there, you wanna professionally decorate it. So you explain to our audience what it is you do and how long you've been doing this. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Um, I have been staging for about eight years and I've staged about 3,000 homes. So I have seen all the scenarios that you mentioned. And luckily working with great realtors like you, we have a great collaboration on to the end goal. But that is what it is. It's an end goal. And uh, staging is purely decorating for selling and decorating in the traditional sense of interior design is for living in the house. So the main difference is, is when we're staging, we're staging to attract as many buyers as possible in the demographic of who we think is gonna buy your home. So it is difficult for people emotionally, like you said, when they've spent good money years ago and that they've maintained their home so well, they feel that it doesn't need an update or an upgrade. Right, just because the tile in the bathroom has the grout's perfect and there's no cracks, they think the turquoise blue is perfect. Absolutely. But when we look at the total picture of the marketing aspect, and that's really what staging is, is that we're hoping to attract the 20 and 30 something, the millenniums, to come in. And as much as they love their parents, they don't want to live in their parents' home. 
So what we do with staging techniques and strategies and tips and tricks is very often we're able to overcome some of these typical objections without expensive renovations and without expensive upgrades. And how do you do that? Well, uh, for example, um, there's a lot of things that can be overcome with accessories, furniture placement, editing. Um, we've talked before, you and I, about obviously decluttering, cleaning in the detail sense of that you'd clean right your car. Right from the outside in. Absolutely. Right from the doorstep. But we know that in the first 10 to 15 seconds, you need to connect with the buyer emotionally. We've got location, location, location. Staging is all about emotion, emotion, emotion. So what we're trying to do is when they walk in, they have that magazine look and feel that looks like home to them. Maybe they look at the Pottery Barn catalog every, you know, when it comes in the mail, Pier 1 you know, our house, West Elm, Ikea, that's the generation in many cases that we're trying to attract. So as beautiful as things may be, it could end up being a distraction. And we're only using the furnishings in the house to highlight the focal points and the architecture of what they're buying. Staging comes from the theater. So you go and you see a sofa and a lamp and you visualize the rest. And that's what we're using the homeowner's things for as props. Right. I think sellers have to realize that you're not saying their things aren't nice. Absolutely. But for them to live there and have, you know, 12 yard rows lined up, mm -hmm. that's what their taste is. Well, first of all, we as a realtor are going to say put those away because we don't want any accidents if someone comes in, bumps into it. But it may not be the next person's taste and they just see it as clutter. Absolutely. And it can also distract people from what we're selling. Um, the key reason we want to stage, if for nothing else, is over 90% of people will decide if they want to view a home in person from the online photos. That is the world we live in. And we used to look yes. at them at our big computer screens. That's right. We're looking at them on our phone. They're the size of a right. postage stamp. And yep. then you've got to connect for them to see your home versus the competition online so it's really really different type of technique with color and texture and height and what have you it's almost like merchandising or marketing a product on a shelf so it's so far from decorating that it i think people is, find yeah. it difficult sometimes to why don't you show us a couple of examples absolutely show um, us from minimal to absolutely um here we have a home that you know has you know very nice furniture and a lot of times we consider it canvas like there it's your basic uh, look of furniture it might just be too much it may be too close together it may not be showing that the room uh, to the to the capacity of it and we want everything obviously to always showcase as bigger brighter um, we use things like plant trees or maybe vertical pictures on a fireplace or whatever to really bring up the ceiling and the windows. So what did you do with this one? With this house, honestly, um, it is just accessories. I mean, this is a beautiful home. Uh, I edited it out, which is our nice way of, you know, um, Decluttered. decluttering <laughs> and getting rid of some things. And then basically I rearranged the furniture so we're not walking into the back of a sofa. That's a very typical yeah. thing. Thing. That, we all that do. Makes me crazy, we want to be right say. across from the TV right, right. for living. But you know, a picture of the back of a piece of furniture isn't going to really give off the beauty of the room. So opening it up and putting furniture flanking on either side of the fireplace and then dressing it up with today's colors, whether it was toss pillows or window treatments or some artwork or some floral arrangements, and really giving it that pulled together look that says, oh wow, that looks like it's well kept, pride of ownership. Put that on the list. I want to see that house. Okay. The next one. And the next one, this is one of your beautiful homes that we staged. And this is a typical scenario where a family, uh, you know, is living in the home, big sectional, overtakes the room. We all love them. But sometimes it can certainly be the only thing that your eye is catching when Toys you go in. everywhere and the blankets, the quilts, especially Absolutely. in the winter. Absolutely. They have the Afghans that granny knitted all over the couch. And we love them. <laughs> and we want you to pull them out. Um, but not you know, when we're showing your, the house. Not when we're showing the house. We're 
are always on in a sense. And again, it is that magazine look. You've got the cake and the frosting with your furniture and all your things. And this is really the stuff, the icing on the cake, so to speak. So basically what we did with this home, as you know, is we really changed the artwork. We wanted to draw attention to the beautiful moldings, to the original beautiful windows. And we're selling floors, windows, walls. So we had way too big of an area rug. Great for little kids crawling and that type of thing. But we weren't showing that gorgeous amber of the hard wood that you can't get in today's. And you know, I don't know if, you, I, if I told you this, but this is 20 Washington Street, a Correct. magnificent. Um, antique, the Bancroft home, and the Lawrence Eagle Tribune, uh, their homes magazine, um, is going to be doing a huge layout on this. Oh, fantastic. And, you know, it shows the beauty of professional photography. Absolutely. Because I had it professionally photographed, and your staging, and um, it should be coming out soon. I'll let you know when it happens, but, you know, you folks can all be looking for it on... Uh, uh, great. I think it's going to actually be in the Reddings magazine. Too. Oh, fantastic. So. Oh, that's been a great addition to the yeah. community. Yeah. Well, this here we and kind of. And that house sold? Yes. First person in the door. I really? Sold it 10 times. First person, so like you said, they bought. They knew immediately. That is fantastic. So. And again, we edited, we used some black and white in here because it's a classic look that appeals to it. And again, we're looking at modern things, but we want to also maintain the integrity of the tradition and the architecture and focal points. It's all about that subliminal thing. We're getting them to look right. at the windows, yep. the ceilings, yep. the molding, things, the fireplaces that they might not catch because they might be overwhelmed with so much in the room. But it's furniture placement, it's form over function. She also had, I remember she had pictures all over the walls, but nothing, no rhyme and reason. Yes. And high and low and all over, in different sizes. Yes. And as soon as those came down, it was a big difference. Yeah, it can be too much stimuli and very nice things, yeah. but, you know, too much of a good thing. Less is more. It is. Is absolutely. And this is not necessarily the most convenient when you live in a home, but... For your effort, it will sell two to three times faster, and staging statistics prove up to 17% more money, and we've seen that time and time again. Yeah, and that's the truth. Yes. Okay, what, what do you get next? Okay, so now we have um, an interesting scenario. Once, very often, um, if a house is on the market for a long time, uh, they may change realtors, hoping that that could be the solution. But often it's really there's a hidden objection or there's, there's an issue within the house. In this house specifically, um, the complaint was that the dining room was small for the home. Um, but we had several sitting rooms. We had a little too much redundancy. So what we did here is kind of trying to be a little more out of the box. We actually changed the use of the rooms. So now you come into the foyer and the big room ahead of you is now a grand dining room uh, with all the views of a beautiful backyard, a double fireplace, what have you. The only thing that made the existing dining room a dining room was a chandelier, but no built-in or what have you. So we basically put a new light fixture there and we brought it out and now it looked like the million dollar home that people expected to walk into. Right, and that home had what, like three living rooms? Absolutely. And a small dining room, so you didn't need three living rooms. So Absolutely. You had to think about it. Now, that's not how they used it, but they weren't going to be using it. They wanted to sell it. You're so absolutely right. Show and it so someone else can. Yeah, live and you're in right it. on that. And less than ten percent of the people can visualize anything. Less than ten percent of the, the people truth. have the gift. That's why we stage new construction. That's the truth. People want open floor plans. They want a lot of space, but then they get in. They're excited. They're a little intimidated, and they really don't know how to live in it. And you have such a good eye. You and I collaborate really well on kind of what the market is looking for, and we can really take something and have people see the flow with a very minimal staging even on you know brand new construction right and you know we keep using shoestring and minimal because you can you can really stage most of it with just their things taking in a couple of punch pillows or whatever but you can also bring in when you do new construction you bring in the whole shebang absolutely you've got to bring in everything absolutely so you can do it from 
one end to the other. Yep, from start to finish. If necessary, uh, we can do that in the instances where we want to focus always on the heart of the home. The most important selling rooms are the family room and the kind of eating and kitchen area. If right. the you know if the buyer comes in and they're not <coughs> jazzed by that nothing else matters. I mean, it all needs to build after that, but they really have to visualize their family being happy and existing in that and space. And sometimes, I mean, you had one recently in Reading that they had to paint the kitchen cabinets. It was old cabinets. It looked terrible, and what a difference it made. I mean, so there might be a little bit of um, effort on the owner's part or their painter or carpenter, right. but again, it made a difference that house sold immediately. Yes. And for over asking. And I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's such a good point, Bobby. The, a lot of the cabinets that are in the kitchens today are still great quality, but they may be oak or they may be a naughty pine or something that's it's still serviceable. But today's market is looking for white and bright and light. Change out your hardware. Put absolutely. Up a couple of glass doors. Yeah. Absolutely. And it gives the whole new I've seen a lot of times people putting in granite with old cabinets and all that. You're not oh, gonna get the bang no, for your buck no. with that. No, because people feel gladly about that. They really do. They say, Oh, I wish they didn't do the granite because now I have to pay for it in the price and I want to get rid of those cabinets. They would have preferred to keep the old four mica. Absolutely. And then I wouldn't and they, feel bad about pulling it out. And they are just aren't able to get past the fact that no. the cabinets are that they feel like they have to be ripped out and then they add in their mind the cost of a new kitchen. But if they see them painted, the reason why they come out so good is the cabinets are good quality in many times and they do look beautiful and they photograph and they get people in the door. That's what we're trying to do yeah, online. That's it. That's get, it. Get buyers in the door. More buyers in the door, more offers. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, so we have you know a few little tips and tricks that we use. Um, you and I have talked about this before, but um, you know, empty bedrooms. Uh, very often, people may use these for um, you know a spare room, an office. Uh, craft room but when we show a house and it's a three bedroom house or four bedroom house we have to show at least two or three bedrooms and I know I go into this all the time because people may be empty nesters or they may be now uh, looking to use it for another <coughs> function or a den that is so great for living I totally get it but when people walk through the house they want and they already love downstairs now they need to see a master with a bed and they need to see a couple bedrooms so we do use use uh, the arrow beds or the beds and very inexpensively again another shoestring shoestring technique where it's kind of almost like a camping mattress on a platform Absolutely. dressed yep. with beautiful yep. linens and I no one knows the difference that. that's right but it shows that you can fit what size bed you're fitting and multiple beds and bureaus can fit and Absolutely. Here's one, an interesting one we did where it was a, you know, a very expensive home with three bedrooms and all the objections were, oh, it should have a fourth bedroom, it should have a fourth bedroom. So uh, what we did is there was a large walk-in closet, there were a few of them, and we basically made it into a nursery. Uh, you know, it just, pe it, people needed to see that the space could be utilized as a fourth you know, not completely bona fide. That certainly could fit a crib, But too. certainly a crib, a nursery, and then people could say, okay, this works for me. So it's, again, that kind of creative, how can we look at the same thing everyone else does and look at it a little different to be attractive to the masses of the market that are coming in? All about, again, the buyers um, and what the buyers are looking for and what's going to connect with them emotionally. And then, and then you don't uh, just stop at the interior. No, you yeah, go right to absolutely. The and I'm using this because it's a big house, so it's easily going to be seen <coughs> here on, on TV. But um, on any home, whether it's a $200,000 home to a $2 million home, all of these principles apply that we're speaking about. Um, you're always going to have the competitive edge if you stage. Here, as you can see, the home is very beautiful, it's big, it's what, but it's a so large. And with a focal point of the home is always the front entrance and the front door. So you do not have to go crazy doing all kinds of things. Once in a while, shutters here or there would make a difference. In this case, 
and it's always 10% of color that really gives us the punch in the pictures. If you look at these, you'll right, notice. Absolutely. Is we basically painted the double doors, classic burgundy, um, and did a small treatment um, around the front door to really bring it in and to invite people and excite people. By treatment, people to you mean the wood in. above it? Yes, that's absolutely. White. Yep. Because you can see the difference between, without it, absolutely. how plain it looked. And then as soon as you do that, not only does the red punch, but that treatment above it. And obviously landscaping, but even if we covered the landscaping, the building came to life. The property came to life with that little bit of color. So I know we all like to kind of live with very subdued flow, feng shui colors and all that, but when it comes to staging, if you don't need to wear your sunglasses inside, it's not bright enough because it's got to show up on those little pictures online. Well, I'm so glad you picked just said something about color because, um, you know, when we go into a house, I actually am going to be listing a home shortly that I went into yesterday, and he actually was not happy when I told him that he had to paint the second floor hall that was brighter than any lime green I've ever seen. Oh, but, you know, I think it just shows that it's a bright house and, you know, we could have fun and I said no it shows that the first thing I have to do when I buy this house is paint these walls absolutely because you know it's just I couldn't tell him it's not a color that anybody else would select you know, <laughs> but I said to him you have to do it and again he wasn't happy he's going to do it and he will say you know it's either that or listen to the complaints about it right so it's a great point it's a great point because we want to bring in the color with the staging the accessories the furnishings but if you're going to do anything in your home in painting or updating you want to give the next buyer almost a canvas if you will that's right and that's why we go with the neutrals a gray is the new beige that type of a thing but Bottom line is this, is that we don't want anything to stand out as something that needs to be done. If you're going to go to the trouble of doing it, we need to make it as vanilla as possible and then it's going to help people visualize. Then we can bring in things like we've shown here, colorful accessories, area rugs, artwork, right. window treatments, all of those things are going to bring in the color, but then the buyer can see, oh good, I don't have to do any work. I'm dealing with a nice neutral palette. The smartest homeowners are those who are used to being reload. Either they're service people or they get reload uh, for their business, for their company. And I always tease, you know, I've had people who have moved 18 times in 20 years and they said, well, the best thing is you don't have any clutter anywhere. I'm in the same house 30 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Empty the, the basement out. But they don't have that problem. But they also don't have the problem of crazy colors because they know this is temporary. And unless you know that this is your house, my house is my house. That's it. I go out feet first. Um, <laughs> so I know the, what I pick is for my own taste. But if you're not sure, oh, you know, you think you're going to be there for five years or maybe two or three more years, and you want to freshen it up and you want to paint it now for yourself, think of your neutral colors because you don't want to hear us say in two or three years, oh, well, you shouldn't have picked hot pink. Absolutely. I just did yeah. this other house, too. The daughter's room is hot pink. And the boy's room, I can't even remember what color his room was now, to tell you the truth. But, oh, in another room, the hallway was purple, and I came down going, and the rugs were all a different color, so it was a patchwork. Yeah. And you walk in, and I had to say to them, no, it's got to go. we got to And even though, colors. yeah, we're advocating color, like we said, it's the 10% of color. If it overtakes the space. Well, it's also not the color on the wall, like you said. Yeah. It's the pillows. I always tell them, decorate with a beautiful rug. Yeah. You know, it doesn't even have to be expensive. You know, well, you used to be able to go to 19 and a half, building 19 and a half. But you can still go places and get a rug for a couple of hundred dollars mm -hmm. that you can take with you and throw in the doghouse if you want. But at least you can put it on the floor now and decorate the room with it. Um, so, or I say to them, get a rug that you think you're going to like and take with you. But um, don't want to hide anything on the floor, though. You know, if you have pet stains, which are the worst things on your hardwood. Absolutely. Those are very difficult to get out. Um, and people now, well, especially brokers, 
we're always picking up rugs because years ago when they built these homes, especially the old homes, they didn't put the hardwood in the middle of the floor to save money. Mm -hmm. So they just put the hardwood around the edges and then you, you put a rug in the middle. And when you pick up the rug, you go, oh, subflooring. So we never want to hide that. Um, but some houses now are getting built that way. They put the tile around it. But we know that, you know, it's disclosed, of course, to the, to the buyer. Um, but rugs, curtains, bedspreads, that's what you want to decorate your room, even for your own self. Because Absolutely. you can change your color scheme. Absolutely. And, you know, you just hit on a really good point. Very often, um, I'll do a consultation, and I, under uh, you know, I understand that, obviously, budget's always a concern. So, basically, you know, I will give the seller some, uh, you know, hints on what to get themselves, and they certainly are capable, in many cases, of doing it. You know, I laugh, Target, Marshalls, you know, TJ Maxx, Home Good Day, all of those places are going to be a good go-to. Oh, good day. <laughs> Even Christmas tree shop. I mean, if it, yeah. we want it to look good for less, it's more about that. And I think that, you know, there are a lot of people out there that can see the trends, understand them, and execute it themselves as well. And one other thing I want to bring up, you brought up, um, I think we both brought up a couple of times about professional photography. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people like to hand us, oh, I took this picture. We want you to take pictures of the pool when it's open mm -hmm. because if we're selling it in the winter and the pool is going to be closed, we'd like people to see the pretty blue color and perhaps run around your garden. Again, if you're anticipating selling in the spring, think about these things. You know, it's, well, now it's too late for next spring, but, you know, pull out your pictures of the yard and the pretty annuals and perennials um, so that we can have it for next year but a lot of people want to hand us pictures we don't want your kids in the pool in it <laughs> you don't want to do that you don't want that online you don't want you know the parents sitting at the barbecue out in the yard um, but and pictures that they take of their house professional pictures are much nicer they use special cameras wide-angle cameras much sharper and as you said a sharper nicer picture is going to sell better. It's going to produce the results and it's a combination of the realtor strategy, the collaboration with the photographer and showcasing the house to its very best advantage. It's a competitive advantage that we're looking to give you with the staging. Well Karen, I truly enjoyed having you here today and my pleasure. I love working with you and to everybody here that is watching thank you for joining us i hope you'll continue to join me throughout my programs if you have anything you'd like to know uh, another show that you'd like me to do please contact me and until then i want you to be happy i want you to be healthy i want you to be safe and please do something nice for somebody whether they ask you or not do something nice you don't even have to tell them Goodbye.